Hello, everyone, and welcome to a live number two show here at 1057 The Point Studios in Creve Coeur, St. Louis, Missouri. What's up, you rafe heads, you shit heads, you shit heels, you number two aholics? We're here today. We're going live. I'm taking calls. We're hanging out. It's been a while. It's been, uh, you know, I had a super busy part of the year. We're revamping the number two show. We got a lot of exciting things coming up for it this year. Uh, I think we're going to be doing a deal. I don't know if I'm allowed to talk about it yet, but I'm pretty sure we're doing a, we're doing a cool thing on Megaphone. We're going to do a live podcast with video component. Uh, we got all sorts of good ideas for types of number two shows. We got musical guests that are going to come in and do tiny stall concerts. But today... I'm hanging out and I'm going live. I just wanted to kind of get back into the swing of things. I got me a new swanky desk I had installed. It may also look like a uh, a diaper changing station, which it is. And uh, I'm all set up for a, for a brand new, brand spanking new experience, new digs, new topics, new ways to approach subjects. So we're going to have fun together today. You can call in and talk about whatever you want to call in and talk about. And uh, the number, well, I thought the number was on the wall here, but maybe, I think it's 818-532-1420 for a good time. Call 818-532-1420. You can leave me a message on the, uh, it's the number two instant feedback line, or you, you can go into the uh, Point app and you can leave me a message in the Point app. You can do the drop down menu uh, in the messages uh, button and it'll say number two show click on that you can leave me a message in there as well and uh, we'll get through them all or you can call me live and we can chat uh, one of the things I wanted to talk about today though specifically if we can I want to talk about conspiracy theories because I went to Denver the past weekend okay I spent some time in Denver and my in my uh, my my second half of my human friendship necklace learned kept texting hey, me uh-oh what was that? Got one loaded up? All right. Well, hold on to that for a second. Uh, the other half of my human friendship bracelet, Learn and I were talking, and she said that uh, she started sending me all these links to conspiracy theories about the Denver airport and how it's connected to the Freemasons and it's connected to the Illuminati and all the art and the imagery. And honestly, man, I saw how far out of town it was, and I started looking around the airport and seeing all kinds of crazy imagery and the train that runs under it. And I, I got to be honest, like the conspiracy theorist inside me came alive. The conspiracy theory person that lives inside me, the libertarian uncle that lives inside me, woke up and said, you know what? What the fuck is going on at the Denver airport? I don't know. There's a lot of weird stuff hanging out. And then today we ended up talking about the big conspiracy going on that's alive and in charge right now is the royal family. Is Kate Middleton even alive? Don't know. They uh, put up a photoshopped picture of her, and apparently that sent the internet into an absolute uh, shitstorm. And even the royal family has decided they're going to start trying. They want they try to get this uh, this picture recalled because it had clearly been edited and tampered with. And I'm trying to pull that picture up uh, right now. But apparently the big I don't know the conspiracy around it was that this photo was from a photo shoot she had done and that her face had been no one has seen her since she had this uh, surgery and people are speculating that that kate may not have survived the surgery now what that means i don't know i don't know why she's not just coming out and doing some sort of live appearance but a lot of people say it's a williams has, william has taken a lover and i gotta be honest man i don't know if he's gonna do much i mean i guess he is the prince but whew. I think the prince needs to get a royal toupee let's talk about that that's a conspiracy i want to talk about i'm william went dry up top dude what's going on can you guys pull up my uh, computer and put it on screen briefly is that a thing i think that's a new element we can do let's see if we can pull it up real quick i just want people to see what i'm seeing which is all right you, you know prince william's looking a little good looking guy don't get me wrong and hey Body positivity all, everywhere around the world. But let's just take, I mean, he's got kind of a used car salesman look going on. And, like, his wife's still pretty hot, so I don't think he needs to be cheating on her. Uh, we can pull that down now. But all I'm saying is I, I don't know what's going on, but there's a big Photoshop controversy around uh, uh, whether or not the princess Princess of Wales is still alive, which is kind of blowing, you know, it's blowing my mind. Maybe it's blowing your minds out there. And I started thinking about that, and I started thinking about, you know, 
what are some of the other conspiracy theories that you've heard? We all have crazy uncles. Some of us, we all have a crazy uncle inside us. I got some conspiracy theories that I'm all in on. You know, I think aliens are real. I don't know if they've been here. I don't know if they, I don't know if they probe our asses or anything like that, but I think they're real. And I'm willing to admit that. And I'm willing to, uh, I'm willing to go down the rabbit hole with you guys. I think there's, I, I did a deep dive on the Freemasons. There's a lot. Of, if you go to like a Mason's Lodge, like an old one, there's a lot of weird shit going on. I went to one in Granite City here on the other side of St. Louis, and there was all kinds of weird altars and a, a safe full of Bibles in a, in a room that they gave us a tour of where it was uh, for the wives of the Freemasons. But in the walls of this ceremonial chamber, there was like, it was like Scooby-Doo shit, dude. They had like paintings with like little eye holes cut out so like people could watch through the walls. And I was like, this is, it's it just got my brain working, man. It's got me working in overtime right now. So uh, anyway, let's get into it. I think I got some, do I have callers? Do I have a, uh, do I have somebody that wants to talk conspiracy theories live? Can't hear you. We're about to get to it. Hey, Rafe, it's BJ, longtime shitter of the number two show. What do you think is better, pork steak tacos or pork steak burritos? And do you think Taco John's would ever put it on the menu? Yes, this is a great conspiracy theory that you've called in with here. Uh, do I like pork steak tacos, pork steak burritos, and do I think Taco John's would ever put them on the menu? What a whirlwind of a topic for us to discuss. Uh, I think that pork steak anything is good. Uh, the only really difference between a taco or a burrito is whether or not it's closed. So I'll say burrito for the handiness of it of being able to carry it around, walk around, get shit done. And uh, I, I hope Taco John's, if they come to the St. Louis area, would put that on the menu. Yes. Thank you for calling. Thanks for calling in. I think I have a live caller now. Let's see what I got here. Who am I talking to? Welcome to the number two show. Who's on the horn? Hey, this is Michaela. How are you, Rafe? Hi, Michaela. How are you today? Oh, I'm splendid. I don't know if my YouTube's running a bit slow at the moment, but I know you said if you wanted anybody to call in. Yeah. Um, You're live, I baby. I was wondering how if you... Awesome. Um, I was wondering, have you heard of chemtrails? Chemtrails. The conspiracy theorists behind that. Yes. I have. Give me a quick... Give me a... It's got to be quick, but give me like a quick summary of chemtrails. What's, you, what's, what's your take on it, Michaela? So basically everybody says that what a chemtrail is, is, you know, there's been YouTube videos coming out of people grabbing snow and basically being able to put a magnet up against it. And there is metal in it um, through the jet stream, as well as, you know, cloud baiting, creating storms that aren't really supposed to be here. So that's just a quick general easy synopsis of what a chemtrail is, that the government is controlling the weather and the rain and things like that. Yeah. All right. Cool. Uh, I'm pulling it up right now. Now I've Dick Gregory, a famous comedian with uh, from St. Louis, was actually a huge proponent of chemtrails. Oh, look at this! Share my screen real yeah, quick, there's fellas. There's a whole bunch of stuff on it. You should go check out Wikipedia. Yes, Wikipedia, where no mistakes have ever been made. <laughs> um, <laughs> Well, I will tell you this. So the whole thing is that it's magnetic snow, and I know that like. They thought the chemtrails, there was a, for a while, people thought chemtrails were making everybody gay. That was a big thing, I remember, like, back in the 90s. And now at least they've up, they've updated that conspiracy. Um, but it's just basically that the, the cloud seeding is what you're talking about, right? Like, creating storms. Mm-hmm. What's well, an interesting yeah, theory. Too. I mean, it all kind of ties in together. Yeah. Do you think it's real? Definitely some information out there. I, to an extent, yeah, I mean husband on the other hand believes that it is just jet fuel and i'm like there's a major difference jet fuel doesn't leave lines within the sky <laughs> really well what do you think crazy, but yeah like if you continue sorry no you go ahead what do you think they're doing with the chemtrails what's the purpose of it in your mind what do you think it is i mean but like i would understand the whole whole portion of cloud baiting right but mm-hmm. I mean, in my in my opinion, I mean, I think it's to okay, maybe it is to 
help the earth in in a way, but maybe so we can't collect rainwater and they're trying to, and it's like, you really want to go down the rabbit hole. Oh, you think this is a water wars yeah, thing. Toxic. You think this is a future yeah. water wars situation. Okay. That's an interesting. Yeah. Now, I will say that I looked it up and it says that contrails are formed when water vapor and fine soot per Articulate from burning jet fuel freeze into ice crystals in low air humidity. Uh, that the crisp, then that's why you don't see vapor trails from all jets, but you do on certain days when they're at the right height and atmosphere. And you think this is all bullshit? You don't think that's true? Yeah, in a sense, yeah, pretty much. Okay. I mean, I read a bunch about it on truth, but I don't want to get too too far in depth just so other yeah. callers can get through. Well, I appreciate uh, you're, well, awesome, you're a very polite conspiracy that. theorist, and I appreciate that. Uh, well, I will say this: I have what I know about chemtrails. Is they do? I'm a big Kurt Vonnegut fan. Uh, he's one of my favorite authors, and uh, others, I can't remember which, I, maybe you've heard of the band Ice Nine Kills, and that is a Kurt Vonnegut. Yeah, I just saw them in concert a couple years ago. Yeah, they're great. Well, that's a Kurt Vonnegut reference, and that is to a book of his, and I want, man, let's see what book it is, because I don't want to give bad info out here. Let's see, Ice Nine Kills Vonnegut, let me put this in real quick. I want to say that it's Cat's Cradle, but I could be wrong. Uh, da -ba -da -da. Oh. Yep, boom, nailed it. 1963 novel, Cat's Cradle. And uh, part of the thing that inspired Kurt Vonnegut to write Cat's Cradle, which is about basically that they have this um, cloud seeding molecule that turns everything to ice that it touches. Uh, but it essentially, it could freeze the whole world and cause catastrophic climate change. And... Uh, he got the idea for this book because his brother, Kirk Vonnegut's brother, worked at GE, and he actually worked in the engineering department in a cloud seeding program where they thought they could, they were experimenting with stopping hurricanes by shooting certain chemicals and certain um, uh, different uh, elements and properties into clouds as they were becoming Category 3 and Category 4 storms. And this is based solely on my memory. I could be wrong. Feel free to correct me in the comments. Uh, but basically, they experimented with the idea of being able to slow down tropical storms uh, and things like that by cloud seeding, you know, to stop property damage and things like that. And I think that's where a lot of these conspiracy theories come from, and maybe they have value. I don't know. Maybe, the, you know, like I could see there's a scientific basis for this. So you're not completely off. I don't think, that, and I get where your husband's coming from. I don't think you're completely off on that, but... Uh, you know, I just don't know what the purpose of them would be. Like, what is, what, what do, you, what do you think? Because we're going to wrap this up and move on to another conspiracy. But oh, that's no, absolutely. That's my I mean, under it, my understanding. I mean, it's a. Oh, sorry, I keep cutting you off. Go no, on. no, go ahead. No, I was just, you know, when you get into conspiracy theories, basically, it's just like. It makes you question everything in life, right? So long story short, it's it's a simple thing of, at least in my mind, to break it down is it's this control. Like, what can the everyday person have access to? What can we control to get them to go buy bottled water? <laughs> I know that's like a really far stretch and trying to keep examples really simple. Well, um, they say the wars in the future so, will be fought over water. So do you think that this is the government's way of controlling that resource so we can't harvest rainwater? That's their main reason for doing this? Yeah, and and groundwater as well, like yeah. having our own wells, having to pay for water. And, I mean, I, there's other things that that's just about the simplest explanation I can put out there for it okay. for the time being without, I guess, going too far down the rabbit hole. But, yeah, just just kind of like skimming the top of that as well. I mean, they do cloud bait, like you were saying, over um, – I could be wrong in Abu Dhabi. I'm not very good at <laughs> geography. Um, so that says a lot, right? Here I am talking about conspiracy theories. Well, that's... Um, but I know they do that to kind of help keep the weather cool. So it just, it makes you question, if we have this tech, why wouldn't they use it to manipulate us as a general population, you know? So it's, I think it's healthy for the brain to question everything. <laughs> I do too. No one's calling you batshit crazy. Just because you might think you're batshit crazy doesn't mean I think you're batshit crazy. All opinions <laughs> welcome here on the number two show even if I would get a restraining order if I met you in person. It's not a big deal, Michaela. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, 
live in St. Louis. I'm about I'm up in Pennsylvania now. So yeah, up in Pennsylvania, like doing you. the research, <laughs> seeing what's going on up here in the coal mine country with uh, all of the chemtrails. All right, Michaela, thanks for calling in. I'm going to move on to another conspiracy theory. Okay, Thank great. you very much. That was all great. Right. Bye bye. Bye bye. Oh, got it. I believe I have another caller. Chemtrails are wild, man. Got somebody on the line. Who am I talking to? Welcome to the number two show. You're live with the host with the most. That's me, Rafe Williams. You hung up. I got one guy that calls in and loses his nerve every single time we do a live, and I wonder if it's him. He's like, if you're the anxiety guy, let's push through it today together. Just call in. Don't hang up. Just say what you need to say, man, because I'll be honest with you. You're just a voice on a line. Nobody, nobody can see you. Even if you say something wild, I mean, don't say something too wild. It's going to get me kicked off of YouTube. But, like, uh, even if you say something that you regret, no one's going to know. It's all good. Do we have any uh, uh, messages coming in? Let me see. Let me look through the live chat. There's thoughts in the live chat? Yeah, lots of comments there. All right, cool. Did I see that recently posted video facing the passenger side of the car? The driver looks back. With their left hand. I don't even know what that means, but oh, the Kennedy assassination. Everybody thinks the, the Kennedy assassination is wild. You know, everybody, I don't think those conspiracy, that has been done almost to death at this point. Uh, I think a lot, there's a there's so many things floating around about the Kennedy assassination that I, I just don't think anyone will ever be satisfied. That's one of those conspiracies that uh, will live in infamy and uh, in our society. Okay, I think we got our caller back. Let's patch somebody in and talk about it. You're live with the number two show. Who am I talking to? Hello. They gone. Lost his nerve again. Must be the same caller. Let's see. Hey, Josh, go in and check on the, 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 I think people are leaving messages in the thing. Maybe we can find one. Okay. Let's see what we got here. The Titanic conspiracy. Hmm, let's look that up. Bohemian Grove is another one, too. That's a wild one because they've proven that that's, like, Bohemian Grove exists, you know. It's a place where the rich and powerful go and they hang out and I I think they misbehave there and there's all these rumors about Bohemian Grove being where uh uh and what's the thing? It says here the people that gather at Bohemian Grove who've included prominent business leaders, former US presidents, musicians and oil barons are told that quote, weaving spiders come not here. That's pretty ominous, meaning business deals are to be left outside. Uh, and I think it's just a place for them to all hang out. And supposedly that's where the only exception to that rule was the Manhattan Project, the atom bomb, Oppenheimer. Uh, they share a passion for outdoors music and theater, but a, a, a lot of it I'm told is rich people doing weird stuff. So they all got dirt on each other. That's the big conspiracy theory around Bohemian Grove that they're like drinking baby's blood and all that jazz out there, which is wild. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Oh, we got a caller. Let's see if it works this time. You're live with the number two show. Who am I talking to? What's up, Rafe? It's Steve. How are you? What's up, Steve? It's Rafe. How are you? I'm doing great. Hey, you're doing a great job on the show. I just want to let you know. Thanks, man. Uh, so, yeah, absolutely. So the one thing I see on Twitter all the time right now is that John Cena was in his humiliation stage the other night and that he's wearing a skin suit as are other people in high power skin suits that's where we're at all right hold on explain that to me one more time that when he was naked on the oscars you mean yeah that was his humiliation ritual which he's already a huge star i'm not really sure why that's getting done now and that he wasn't actually naked but he was in a skin suit <laughs> that's very funny uh, I don't know where I don't know where to go with that. Serve what? That's okay. That's a pretty cool. Uh, that's a good one. Let's look into that. I'm looking up 
John Cena skin suit. I mean, I saw. All over Twitter this morning. I mean, that looks like a real body to me. He's in pretty good shape. I saw people like shaming him for not having a six pack, and I'm like, my God, what does a man have to do to get respect? He's out there. I also saw that he was in some kind of weird reverse ass diaper, like flesh colored ass diaper, which was really funny to me. Uh, I did see that as well. Okay. Well, I'm looking on here, and I don't see wh what's the purpose of the humiliation phase. What does the skin suit serve? Do we know anything else about it? Other than uh, that's how you become famous and more powerful in Hollywood is this humiliation ritual. Oh, well, let that be the case. I'm willing to do anything, Hollywood. If anybody's watching right now, I just want you to know <laughs> there's no amount of humiliation that uh, – I mean, I'm doing a talk show – live on a toilet right now i've proven that there's no amount of humiliation that i'm not willing to endure to get my career off the ground so if you're out there and you're watching and you felt like john cena uh you know didn't humiliate himself good enough for uh like assuming the lizard people i'm, I'm assuming if we're getting into skin suits we got to be getting into some lizard people's situation i could i'll be honest i've been trying to work out it's very hard so if you could get me some sort of John Cena skin suit that I could slide into, uh, that would be dope. I would very much like to have a John Cena skin suit. So Hollywood, if you're watching, I'll drink the baby's blood. I'll, I'll suck all the ding-dongs I got to suck. And uh, just put me in that John Cena bodysuit. And, uh, you know, uh, it's going to be uh, – everything's coming up brave. Thanks for calling in, buddy. Yeah, I think everything should come up brave. Thanks, pal. All right, I think I got another caller. I love hanging up on right in the middle of someone's sentence. All right, I believe I have another caller here. Uh, hopefully it's Hollywood calling to give me that John Cena skin suit because, man, I'll tell you what. That's a lot better than working out. You got somebody live, you hear? Check, check, one, two. Oh, take your time. I'm honestly, I'm daydreaming about this skin suit right now. I can't stop thinking about how Thank cool you for calling Colin would be host uh, to just. Uh, well, there you go. There's the upside of a live show. You guys, we just got patched into the mainframe. You start talking conspiracy theories, dude. Weird stuff starts happening in your studio, man. People are hacking into the mainframe, dude. I, uh, I honestly. It would be, how cool would it be if we could just have skin suits? You just upgrade, you know? You don't have to Up and try again. work out. I mean, I would just take, if they just had like a part of a skin suit that was just a bigger penis, that would be cool. I'd slide into that in a heartbeat, guaranteed. Guaranteed. There's a, you can make a lot of money from, uh, from growers as opposed to showers, if you just had a skin suit that was just like a nice little penis sleeve that could go on, stay on, be fully functional, just to be walking around, just to be comfortable walking around in a YMCA locker room, you know, with your skin suit flopping around. And, uh, you know, you could save up for the rest of it. But I would definitely start at the penis. Like, I would buy the penis first, <clears throat> and then I guess, I mean, I could probably just use my own balls. I don't care that much about those. Uh, and then I would buy the abdomen, get some six pack going. So I'd start penis, then six pack. Uh, and then I, I got a pretty good ass. Honestly, I got a pretty, I like, I got a good ass, uh, probably. And I got, I got good legs and calves. So I'd probably save those for last. I'd probably go work through my chest and upper body. Uh, and then, you know, then I'd say arms, legs, and I definitely hands and feet last. <laughs> I mean, who cares? Nobody's looking at your feet. I got good feet anyway, full four. I got working man's feet, and I'm proud of my feet. So however much that knocks off my skin suit, uh, I would be very happy about that. Uh, let's see. I'm going to go into the chat here and see what we got. Anything good? Everybody's hollering about Uncle Tuna. I wonder if Tina's Your on show or meeting number and press pound. Press pound, everybody. Now you know. Flat Earth. Somebody's talking about Flat Earth. Let's talk about that, dude. I, I'll i be honest, man. I met a Flat Earther at a Kansas City Chiefs football game one time. And the guy was talking about, you know, and we were just, you know, 
ridiculing this guy mercilessly because he was telling us how he knew the earth was flat and there was no curvature of the earth because he went up in a plane and he stood on a mountain and he's like if there was curvature i'd have saw it and we ridiculed the guy mercilessly we really did we gave him hell for i mean at least an hour before a kansas city chiefs football game about uh you know how dumb he was and what a what a sheep he was and how he how could anyone be so stupid to conform and believe and all that and then you know 10 minutes later the entire stadium's doing the tomahawk chop and i'm like you know what maybe we need to cut brian a break uh we all got shit to work on you know what i'm saying <laughs> so uh i don't know i could see a, I, I mean flat earth just seems like a dumb one to me i mean we've proven that time and time again and I can't imagine we're floating around on a disc, you know. Uh, we've proven by flying around the world, that, and you can see the curvature of the Earth. It's been proven over and over. But you know what? This one's a pretty harmless one to me because it's like, oh, okay, if if we all said, yes, the Earth's flat, then what? Nothing. Really nothing. So it's just, uh, you know, whatever you got to believe in to feel good. I think I got another caller, though, so let's see if they want to talk about something crazy. You're on the number two show. I hope you're live. Who am I talking to? This is Courtney. Hi, Courtney. How are you today? I'm doing all right. How are you, Rafe? Well, I'm doing pretty good. I'm just glad that your call came through. I feel like we were dropping calls left and right. So now that you're here, I'm happy. What's uh, what you call in about, Courtney? So I wanted to continue to talk about this Kate Middleton stuff that we talked about on the Riz Show. Okay. Let's get into it. What, what do you know about Everybody it? Everybody thinks she's dead? Mm hmm No, I don't know anything, but I'm asking you about it because I wanted to talk about it. Oh, okay. You, you want to know about it. it. I'll have to stay on the phone. Yeah. All right. Well, here's, uh, here's what I know about the Kate Middleton situation. Everyone, she went in for an abdominal surgery. Uh, let me type in conspiracy and see if I can find the photo. Okay, because I Googled it earlier after everybody talked about it on the Rich Show. Oh, yeah. And I I couldn't figure out which picture it was that everybody was talking about. I found it. Give me one second. I'm about to pull it up, and I'll put it up on the... Here we go. Nice. Can, let's go ahead and pull me up on the... Uh, pull up my computer so everybody can see. Wow. Yikes. I don't want to know about Kate Middleton, but, man, if they were going to do some editing, they should have edited those kids' smiles. What's going on, dude? They all look like, what has happened in this photo? They all look like they're gasping for breath. Uh, I don't know. I think the thing that was weird was they said that one of the kids' hands didn't line up with their sleeve or something like that, and, there was a, uh, and that this picture of Kate was. Oh, I see it. Wait, which one? Which kid? The kid, uh, the little girl in the red sweater, if you look at her right hand, her yeah. sleeve doesn't line up. Okay. Well, there you go. It does look like they were all pulled from another photo. Oh, yeah. You can see the little red where something got edited. So, yeah, yeah they were definitely. saying that uh, were Kate's face in this photo was, uh, and that she just basically hasn't been seen in like two months, like in public. So, it's like, uh, what's so, his name? The Scientology guy's wife, uh, Miscavige or whatever. Like... Everyone thinks maybe something's going so do you on. Do think she's dead? Uh, I do not think she's dead, no. Uh, but it is kind of weird that the Princess of Wales is having to edit her own photos because she said she did the editing uh, and was just trying to make everybody look better, and I thought that was kind of weird. Uh yeah, wouldn't they have somebody to do that for them? I would think so. I mean, they have someone to wipe Prince Charles's ass, and he has a special toilet seat that he takes around everywhere. Uh, so I would think they could probably they could swing a video editor. You know, I don't think we need to be like I can't. I can't believe the Princess of Wales came to a royal meeting and was like, "Hey, kind of want to put a family photo out. Can I get a video editor?" And Prince Charles climbed down off of his special toilet seat and was like, "No, bitch." getting cap cut like everybody else you know what i mean that's crazy to me that the that the best yeah, the budget sound. of the royal family would be cap cut but hey you know what it seems like it's a mess right now too dude because i'm like what it's such an easy fix so that's the thing that's got me feeling weird about it is i'm like it's an easy fix why isn't she coming out 
Why is she just coming out and saying like, "Hey, I'm alive. Sorry about that. Here's a live." Exactly. She could do an Instagram they don't have live. A problem addressing the public for everything else. Yeah. So I don't know. Let's see if we can find this cover of Vogue. I'm gonna look real quick to see if I can get this side by side. Because that so, was the big. While you're doing that. Okay. I think those people are also part of this like crazy government reptilian creatures from another planet. Oh, okay. Well, now we're getting into some crazy shit. What? Oh, who's those people? <laughs> so, like, just our government, the higher-ups, the rich people. You, and you think they're involved in the... The what? The, the, the British monarchy? Yeah, I think all the higher-ups, all the different governments, they're just a bunch of aliens, something or others from somewhere else controlling us we're just like a little game for them oh okay here pull up my computer real quick and then i'm gonna put a pin in this this is the vogue cover that they're saying basically can you guys see it over there so here's the vogue cover that's showing that kate middleton's face was pulled straight off this cover and laid over and that basically the picture was ai generated and not real which i'll be honest it is pretty spot on uh, so now I don't know. Maybe she oh, did. Wow. It's pretty wild. But when they lay her face over that it, is really wild. Uh, yeah, they're just basically saying that, like, they put this photo out for proof of life and that maybe Kate's not doing so well. I don't know. That's wild. All right. Well, and see, that's a, that's another thing. They always drop their little hints. Always drop. in there and who's, all of that. Who's they? The, the, the British monarchy, like when they killed Princess Diana. Oh, yeah. The cabal. Well, that's the big theory is it's yeah. the same. It's history repeats itself. Williams got himself a little side piece, and now Kate became a problem. And I don't know, man. I mean, the the yeah, wives are a lot hotter than – there's too much inbreeding going on in the monarchy. That's for sure. Like, because it's always the hot <laughs> wives having doubt. to get with these, like, really squirrely looking – I mean, w William was a good-looking dude, but, man, he went kind of – he's gone full penis head. Now he needs to, he needs to get it. I think they should reinvest yeah, their money. All that if, money, and he's walking around with skinheads. Yeah, if they're gonna Photoshop something, I think they should Photoshop like, uh, you know, like Robert Redford's hair on top of the prince's head. But anyway, I'm gonna drop the call, and and we got a bunch of people waiting to call in. But it was good talking to you. Bye bye. <laughs> she's out. She's way down the rabbit hole, dude. She's down. She's evil cabal, uh, government conspiracies. All right. Well, we got to wait a second. She's gone. Uh, she's gone way down the hole. I will say that that picture of her in Vogue magazine did look very, very real to me. It did look like uh, it did get laid over. Thank you for I don't know what caused that. To your show, somebody is. Uh... <laughs> Someone said the John. Another John Cena conspiracy is that. Jim Carrey is John Cena. <laughs> he died a few years ago. It's just Jim Carrey in a muscle suit. Yes, that is a that seems like a very valid theory that we should definitely discuss. Uh, someone in the chat said the only flat Earth is Taylor Swift's ass, which I don't really understand, but it's funny. Uh, all right, I think I got another caller on. You're live on the number two show. I hope. Who am I talking to? Shelly. Hi, Shelly. How are you? Hi. I'm well. Thank you, Rafe. I just real quick, absolutely love you. And when are you going to come to Central Florida? Well, uh, thank you. And I don't know. I don't what What's in Central Florida? Me. I want to see you, well, Shelly. What's, what's a town in Central Florida? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, honey. Uh, Orlando. I'm We're close to Orlando. I live in All right. Day, which is on the... Central East Coast. Well, I'm going to be in Miami yeah, but, going on um, a cruise. We're driving distance. Yeah, I know. I couldn't afford the cruise. I wanted to go. Definitely. Well, I don't blame you. It's expensive. Uh, I don't know. I'll figure it out. I'll try to get down there as soon as I can. Did you have a conspiracy theory you wanted to chat about? I, I absolutely do. It's, it's kind of old. It's the stuff about Cat Williams where he lost his shit on um, Shannon Sharp's show. Dude. And went crazy. It was amazing. I, my question it was amazing. I've watched it a couple of times. Okay. My question to you is, 
it kind of, you know, like the other comedians on their podcast, they tippy toed around it, didn't want to, they said stuff and then they didn't say stuff. Do you think it's true, the stuff that he says about, um, I lost my train of thought, the dude that does Family Feud? Steve he Harvey? Really, he really went after him. Thank you, Steve Harvey. Yeah. Well, do you think that's true? Do you know anything? What did he say about Steve exactly? He said that he uh, tried to take Bernie's uh, spot on the Ocean Show uh, movies. He said that he stole, uh, Steve stole Kat's um, stand up about being homeless, that Kat was homeless and Steve was never homeless. A lot of stuff. Huh. But he also said he read like three thousand books, and so I don't know. It, it would he got cr- I, I think he's drunk, honestly. I think he's pretty loaded. No, I can't get my internet to load it up here. I'm trying to look up the what exactly happened. Which well, that was pointless. Let me go back and try this again. Uh, let's see what the big takeaways from the cat. I'll tell you this: Cat Williams, in my opinion, is so crazy. I believe everything he says. He's just gotten to a point where I'm like, he spewed so much batshit stuff that I'm like, you know what? He probably is telling the truth. Who knows? I did see that he said he could run a 4 nine forty yard dash, and everybody made fun of him, and he did it. Uh, like a couple of days, there's a video of him oh. like running a 40-yard dash in a 4-9, and they timed it, and I was like, hey, man, that dude's like 57 years old, and he ran a 4-9, dude. That's like, there's guys in D3 college that are coming out of high school running that. Um, no shit. I, you know, the thing, thing, the hard thing about Cat is I don't. I could see, you know, Dave Chappelle said some pretty wild shit about Hollywood too, and yeah, I'm looking up the Steve Harvey Harvey thing. He says plagiarized Mark Curry's role in Hanging with Mr. Cooper. That was a big one, and Mark even yeah. said it that it happened. Yeah, I mean, I could see that. Uh. Have yeah. you ever seen him or met him? Okay. I have not. No, I have not. We are related, though. I heard his show is really, really good. Yeah, he's, he's one of the best com- working that. comedians. He still makes me laugh harder than almost any other comic. So, um, But anyway, I, 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 I I'll say this because i got to move on. i got other callers. I sure. am at a point where Lord only knows uh, where Cat Williams' head is at. But he's so crazy that I kind of believe everything that he says. So that's that's my take on it. Uh, my conspiracy take is like, Fair enough. if Cat says it, I, I, until it's proven not to be true, I take it as gospel. All right, talk to you and later. I haven't proven it. So. Bye. Bye. All right, I got another caller on whom I'm talking to, and what is your theory of conspiracy? Hey, Rafe, how's it going? This is Rachel. Hi, Rachel. It's going well. How are you? Uh, Not too bad. Um, So I want to know your thoughts on the idea of the uh, potential active volcano under Yellowstone and Wyoming. If this has been touched on, I don't I don't know. I haven't followed every um, number two show. So my apologies if it has. But if it erupts, didn't have to roast me, but that's fine. (laughs) <laughs> uh, the thought is that it could wipe out, you know, the entirety of the U.S. Whoa, and really? I haven't heard this here. one. You've piqued the my interest, friend. Is... <laughs> and I don't know a lot about it, but I've heard bits and whatever here and there. But the thought is, do we think that the government knows when it's going to erupt? Or do, they, do we think they have control of the potential oh. to make it erupt if they want to? So, well, I would imagine if you about, dropped a neutron you know, bomb into any volcano, it would go off. So I would say the potential to make sure. it erupt is probably there. It says here, sure. I just went on uh, Yellowstone.org. They know it's out there. It says Yellowstone doesn't just have a volcano. Yellowstone is a volcano, and it's active. A plume of molten right. rock that it's rises beneath park, the park creates the geysers and hot springs are all uh activity of a super volcano so it's it's in there and they know that it's there the next big eruption no one can answer that question 
but they don't expect one soon. The most recent period of dormancy has already lasted 70,000 years and may continue for thousands of additional years. So uh, it is, I, I'll be honest, I didn't know that. I didn't know that it was all just sitting on a super volcano here. That's pretty wild. But I will say, well, and the, pull up my uh, pull up my my screen because it, there's weirdly the super volcano kind of looks like something at a gynecologist's office. <laughs> Isn't that sure crazy? That's I mean, what's up with that, dude? Like if you look here, you I can kind of like see it. this is the uterus. This is where the giant magma is. Where the you know. <laughs> That's the front door. This is the back door here. So she's face down. She's face down clearly in this. So uh, I don't know. Maybe that's the conspiracy. Maybe that's that's what uh, we got to keep our eyes. And I don't I don't know what crustal stretching is, but that doesn't sound like something I'm interested in. Uh, that's sure something. Does it, does it. Clean that up on your own. But it says geysers, resurgent dome. I mean, if you really look at this, I don't know. It kind of seems like uh, active volcano is just Mother Earth's vagina. Let's think about that. And it, and it may very well be. You know, you could look at, you know, if this is yeah. large enough. A volcano. my understanding, to wipe everything out here and then force us out. But is it a means for, you know, there's mm -hmm. been, I've heard back and forth um, over the years, a means that the government kind of has control to essentially, you know, cause the chaos that would would blow up essentially the united states that seems to be yeah, a per, 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 prevailing know. theory in all of these is that the government somehow Isn't is in control <laughs> hmm, I it's wonder. almost like people have <laughs> never been to a dmv to see what government control looks like uh but oh my gosh. it's possible <laughs> and thanks for calling in this is a cool one i like this one so thanks, check that you. out the Keep yellowstone right super volcano conspiracy i want to go to yellowstone soon uh do i have another caller all right, let's pop sure on, baby. Do. Who am I talking to, man? This is Chaz. Chaz, what's up, dude? What up? What up, man? <laughs> <laughs> what's up, bro? You got a conspiracy theory, or did that. you just call to <laughs> kick oh, it? Yeah, man. All right, what's up, man? We're chilling. All right. So, uh, no one's going to talk about aliens yet, man? Yeah, I haven't had any alien conspiracies. I actually was I mean they did talk about lizard people, which I think would count, but what's up? What do you got? Oh, yeah. What's on what do you got on the I think aliens uh, are so widely accepted now that people don't even see it as a conspiracy theory anymore, man. Oh, uh, they don't they don't care. What what's your take? Yeah, what you what aliens see, do you want to uh, talk about? America? Sorry, go ahead. I cut you off. Say um, that again. You're good. You know anything about uh what what's going on in Antarctica? Uh, is that an alien related thing or do you want to know like what is just happening in, happening in Antarctica? Well, I mean, like it's a, it's a new theory that's sort of being hyped up recently, uh, about what's going on underneath the ice. Um, I, I I'm going to be terrible at explaining this, but I'll make it super short and uh, keep it simple. Okay. Um, so basically there have been, uh, I guess General Byrd, he uh, created maps and whatnot, and he went on expedition uh, with the Navy that was supposed to last either 12 months or two years. It ended up being only four-month trip uh, without an explanation as to why it was stopped. Uh, long story short, there is still greenery underneath the two miles of ice on the top. Greenery? Um, the oldest pyramid to date. Greenery, bro. Okay. <laughs> Chaz is like, whoa, dude, I heard there's some greenery under the ice in Antarctica, and all of a sudden the Chaz man's interested by my, my guy. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, I mean, there, there are other things dude, like alien, uh, major hitters. In the alien Antarctica weed what? would hit different. Let's be honest, right? That shit would hit different, oh, dog. Sure. Uh, I'm finding stuff on the internet. I'm I'm googling it. It's not saying a whole lot, but it's saying like uh, that. Yeah, they uh, there might be alien species under the ice in Antarctica. Yeah, that's so interesting. We haven't figured out time travel or you know how to travel light years or anything. So what better way is to you know check out what we're doing here on Earth if you live here on Earth? 
Yeah, dude. I mean, even like just the whole Pangea thing, I could see, you know, if there was a supercontinent at one point, like there's probably all kinds of like artifacts and stuff frozen in that ice. A lot of treasures of the world frozen in that ice that would be uh, interesting to humankind. But most importantly, sure. that, that good bud, right, brother? That good bud. <laughs> all right, Jazz. Yeah. I'll talk to you later, bro. Thanks for calling in, man. This is a good one. Alien invasions under... I love learning about new conspiracy theories, dude. I'm going to do such a deep dive. I'm just, like, bookmarking all these in my computer. I hope you guys are out there doing it, too. I got I got another caller on. I'm going to take one or two more calls, and we're probably going to wrap this up because we've been on here long, but I'm having a blast. I hope you guys are having fun, too. Uh, all right. Uh, let's see what we got here. Who am I talking to, and what are we talking about? Hey, my name's Caden. Hey, Caden, what's up? Uh, I was curious if you've ever heard of trauma actors. Trauma actors? Are we talking about like the Alex Jones thing yeah. that he just lost his entire fortune for? Uh, I have heard of that. Uh, you're talking okay. You're talking like the Sandy Hook thing, right? Yeah. Yeah. Do you think that's real? Yeah. Uh, to an extent, at least, because like... Um, I've seen some interviews where it was some people that were at the 9-11. Yeah. And then some other people that were also at other mass shootings and stuff like that. And it's like the same four people. And it's really kind of weird. You know? Yeah. It's like there's this one older lady with glasses who was at 9-11 and then she was at a mass shooting. Like, I don't know if that's just dumb luck or what. <laughs> Well, was she actually at both, or were you saying that it's, like, yeah. fake? No, she was at both and interviewed for both of them. Okay. By the news. Well, uh, the only thing I know about it really is, is the whole InfoWars crisis actor thing with Alex Jones, which I, he didn't take into the cleaners right now for defamation and uh, – I don't know if it's slander or if it is uh, – what's the difference when it's in print? What's the difference, Josh? You know that? It's, um, it's either slander sure, or know. it is something else. Uh, yeah. What is the difference? Libel? I think libel is when it's in print. So I, I don't know if he's getting – I think libel is what he is getting sued for because he went live and said it on the air as a – and I know that the – I mean, obviously – Sandy Hook and Newtown, those things happened. So I definitely yeah. think that it's in poor taste to <laughs> accuse, like, crisis act. Like, he went as far as to say, like, the ch that it didn't happen and that the children were actors and the whole thing was actors. And I I yeah. think Alex Jones yeah. did it. I think he did it for the entertainment value. He was getting clicks and getting views, and yeah. he didn't think that he would have to answer for it. So I'm skeptical of anything that comes from a place of – somebody trying to just Knowledge. sensationalize stuff to make money um but you know i mean 9 11 definitely happened i've been to the pools i've seen the holes in the ground and and the, the effect that it had on people there so but you never know man there could be like lesser things like that i could see you know if the government was trying to build a case against somebody like having like you know, actors that they've hired to be witnesses or something like that. Maybe lower level crisis, but I don't know about the whole like. Right. I don't. I don't know about like the whole staging of events, but uh, it is an interesting theory, man. And uh, but I I am yeah. officially so I don't get sued. I am. I do not believe in crisis <laughs> actors, and I am not accusing anyone of being a crisis actor here today. Uh, thank you. All right. Thanks for calling, anybody. No problem. All right, I got another. Uh, I got another conspiracy theorist on the horn. Your voice is going to be modulated to protect your identity. Please tell me what you, who you are, and what you're calling about. Hey, it's Kurt. Oh, sorry, Kurt. I forgot to turn the voice modulator on. Actually, we heard your. your <laughs> my bad, dude. <laughs> yeah. We'll get you on the next one. How's it going, Kurt? It's what, all good, man. How, how are <laughs> you, buddy? Good, bud. What do you want to talk about, man? What do you got? Anything cool? Any like offbeat conspiracy sure. theory? Just one that I've heard. 
Okay. You there? Damn, Kurtz was so fucking juicy that the government just fucking droned his ass. Right, right when he was talking to me, Kurt got droned. God, I'll never know what that was. Kurt, if you're out there, man, I'm sorry you just got uh I'm sorry that you just got blown up by a drone, dude, for just trying to tell the truth here on the number two show where people come to get their factual news. I got somebody else on the horn. Who am I talking to? Oh, is that me? Yeah, that's you. You're on. How are you? Oh, great. How are you? <laughs> I'm good. Who am I talking to? This is Amber or huh? um, Carl the Mannequin. <laughs> Hello, Amber, Carl the Mannequin. How are you? I'm great. What do you got today? You got some offbeat, crazy conspiracy theory that's going to get you drone strike too, or what are we? What are we? What are we working with here? Maybe um, I was going to go out in the woods and look for mushrooms, but my mom's like, "Do not do that." There's so many abductions going on, and I don't. I think she thinks people are getting abducted uh, to be sacrificed to Satan or something. <laughs> and I'm wondering, am I? just being too ignorant or are people really being abducted places <laughs> well i mean there's a lot to unpack there uh did your mom say that she thinks you're gonna get abducted to be sacrificed or just abducted um abducted but she has sent me a lot of stuff about uh the satanic cults all over the place yeah so i'm assuming that's what she thinks well, I mean, I, as a child who lived through the 80s and 90s and the satanic panic, I know that some of it is definitely manufactured. But on the other hand, I talked about this uh, on the air on a radio show, the Rizzuto show, the mothership of, uh, if you will, of the number two show. And I partied in Metamoros, Mexico when I went to spring break in uh, uh, South Padre Island, Texas. And... Got super drunk in a border town in Mexico, and I was pissing in the streets and just out there having a good old time wandering around like an idiot. And I find, then I read an article a few years later that there was a satanic cult in Mexico uh, who were kidnapping spring breakers and, like, uh, killing them and eating their brains. And, and that that's true. They found, like, heads in pots and all kinds of crazy. So those things do exist in the world. Now, I don't know on a broad scale – how much that's happening and, it, and if you talk to people in the satanic church they get offended by this because they they say the church of satan is about chaos it's not about sacrifice not about killing that it that it is a legitimate religion and i don't want to i don't want to say that it's not i mean it's as legitimate as any religion in my view uh but i will say in general as a female abduction is something that you probably have to worry about more than men and that's a bummer uh, I know that that's something that uh, my, my my counterpart, Learn, on the show talks about quite often uh, is that, you know, she's just worried about, like, getting getting stuffed in a van or something like that. I mean, you hear about that all the time. Human trafficking is a very real thing. So your mom's got a little bit of right. a point. I don't know that they're out in the woods uh, uh, in gra Missouri. grabbing right. mushroom hunters. In the middle of the woods. Yeah, I mean, it'd be if risky. Anything, I feel like somebody would take my mushrooms from me. Well, I mean, I could see that for sure. Um, there's probably some, like, you might, you might, if the Grateful Dead came through recently, there might be a couple uh, loose Wookiees running around out in the woods that might try to take you to Shakedown Street and steal all of your mushrooms. But I think, are you looking for psychedelics or morels? No, morels. Oh, okay. I thought you were out on a psychedelic hunt. I was like. You know, oh, no, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> morels, and I actually thought about bringing some into the show if I were to find enough. <laughs> yes, there's nothing that our show would like better uh, than to eat some wild mushrooms that uh, that we have no way to source. Riz would love that. I promise you, he would just yum yum eat them up. He would. Um. All right. Well, I got one more caller on, and I want to get through them because I got to get off in the next five minutes. But it was great talking to you. And yeah, take some bear mace or take a knife. Or I mean, it's Missouri. I'm assuming you're probably armed anyway. Just uh, be careful when you're out traipsing <laughs> around the woods. But I, I think you're safe to get some morels and not get abducted. See you later. All right. I believe my final caller. 
for the conspiracy episode of the number two show is on the line. Rape. Yes. Who am I talking to? Hey, hey, man. <clears throat> it's a horror movie fanboy over there on Twitter that talks to you every now and then. And uh, this is a great episode. I want to circle back to the stoner guys uh, conspiracy. Chaz? And it's called, yeah. He said it pretty well. It was uh, it's a Did whole he? earth theory. What is it? Uh, well, as well as as well as he could after about a pack of gummies, but they there's a hollow earth theory. Okay. That uh-huh. aliens aliens did land through a porthole, I guess up in the or down in the Antarctic, and he talked about a navy mission that went to look for this hole, and their the magnetic draw of the poles throws their compasses off. They say okay. that's why it can never be found because. They're not aware of the actual area they are when they're approaching that. And apparently there's a giant civilization down there of the higher-ups. Okay. The aliens. Maybe it ties into the lizard people type theory or something. I don't know. So if the Earth were to be you know, oh. destroyed or wars, they're safe down there. They have gardens, like a Garden of Eden type thing going on. But that's what people think. I think that's what he was kind of talking about there, that the aliens have been living down there for quite a while in the core of the earth okay Man. that's probably why i couldn't find it he didn't have the theory name yeah, now i'm looking at it and... yeah i'm looking at it now and it says the yeah. hollow earth is a concept proposing that planet earth is entirely hollow and contains a substantial interior space uh okay i'm trying to figure out when this navy expedition was they're talking about here do you know if that was recently or what's going on with that I, I don't I don't actually know much about this theory. I just know it kind of tied into what he was talking about. Yeah, it sounds like so some journey to, to the center it. of the earth stuff to me, man. Some Jumanji stuff, you know? Like, yeah. Basically, we think the yeah, aliens are the other, doing Jumanji inside the earth is what I'm getting out of this. Yeah, and then there's other theories like Godzilla and different things. Like there's, a, you know, some titans that live down there. And that's how I guess he were, were to come out, you know, in the cinema. But... <laughs> There's all kinds of wild theories about how it works. Oh, okay. Hang up and listen to the rest of it. All right. man. Love you on the show. Thanks, buddy. Thanks for calling in. So, yeah, I'm looking this up right now as we're talking, and there's some kind of crazy stuff on here. It just seems like uh, people think, man, I'm sorry my internet is very slow. Uh, Hollow work theory isn't so funny anymore. Whoa, dude. Yeah, it just seems like people think there's an earth inside the earth. Like, basically, the earth is a giant little rust, uh, Russian nesting doll. And on the inside, uh, there's like a whole other uh, civilization living underneath this. Now, I, I'm not saying this isn't true. Um, that would mean, to me, that it would have to have its own atmosphere, uh, its own... I'm assuming planets inside the Earth. I don't know. How would anything grow? How would anything uh, uh, survive in there? And it seems the funny thing to me is is that would be a smaller environment, and that seems like everyone thinks everything inside of that is bigger, like King Kong and Godzilla. just sounds like a lot of movie stuff to me. Now, chicken egg. Did Godzilla come from the Hollow Earth Theory? Did Hollow Earth Theory come from Godzilla? I don't know the answer to that. I don't. I'm just a guy on a toilet looking down the barrel of a camera asking the world to love him, okay? I don't know. But I will tell you this. If John Cena can wear a bodysuit, I'm still thinking about that, and it can give him a bigger penis, then you know what? Maybe, maybe, maybe hollow earth is a thing, you know? And maybe that there is an entrance through Antarctica. I'm sure there's something weird going on at the poles, you know? That's where all the magnetism and all this stuff's at. Uh, But whatever it is, anything can happen. And uh, this has been a really fun episode. It's nice to get back in the swing of things. I appreciate everybody that called in and gave me at least a little bit of insight into your conspiracy theories. And yeah, we just touched on stuff. We didn't do a deep dive on any of this. I just wanted to make people aware that they're floating out there, kind of have some fun and talk about it. And uh, I know I certainly... Had a fun time, and I got some stuff I'm going to be Googling. I'm going to be seeing if I can get me uh, down payment on one of these uh, John Cena bodysuit penises. I know that. 
Uh, number two, I'm going to find out what's going on with Kate Middleton and see if we can get them to Photoshop uh, some hair on a Prince William's head because that seems like a more pressing issue in the royal family, in my in my opinion. Um, and uh, 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 there were a couple other things I want to know about. I just found out Yellowstone's sitting on a volcano. That seems problematic, but I'm going to check that out. But hey, you guys are awesome. I appreciate you watching. For, we're gonna the number two show is gonna be rocking and rolling in 2024. We got all kinds of cool stuff lined up for you. So make sure and like and subscribe and all that jazz you have to do on YouTube so you get notifications about new number two shows. I'll keep you posted on the Rizzuto show, the mothership of the number two show. And until next time, I've been your host, Rafe Williams. Thanks for tuning into this live YouTube stream of the number two show. Stay safe and don't forget to wipe.